week in our video sessions, we're going to focus in on InDesign and we're going to talk about threading text. In order to talk about threading text though, we need to first talk about how to import text. So here I am in InDesign and I have a basic two column layout, uh, two column layout spread essentially per page. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring in a Word document and have that placed within this first column. I want to import a Word document and have it placed. But it's not quite as simple as that because when I import a Word document, that Word document may have a bunch of stuff in it. It might have tables, it might have formatting, it might have different styles, who knows. So what I'd like to do in this example is I'm going to wash that Word document first. I'm going to remove all its formatting and then I'm going to bring it into um, InDesign and we can actually do this in one step. It's all part of the import process. So whenever you want to bring in an external file in InDesign, whether it's an image, whether it's text file, whatever it might be, you go to the file menu and you choose place. You can also use a keyboard shortcut and that's control D. Then I'm going to choose in this case the Word document <clears throat> I want to import and then I'm going to put a check mark in this box here that says show import options and I'm going to click open. So in here it's there are some important pieces. <clears throat> One would be to include the table of contents in a Word document. Now this Word document doesn't actually have any of these. It doesn't have a table of contents, <clears throat> doesn't have an index, doesn't have footnotes, doesn't have endnotes. Um, so I really don't have to worry about any of this. However, if your Word document has a table of contents and you didn't actually want to bring that in, simply uncheck that box. It makes it really easy. You can also choose um, options related to formatting. So I can remove the styles from that Word document. I can tell it to choose lo or preserve local overrides, which bas basically means any additional specific formatting that you did, maybe you highlighted some text, made it bold and italic, whatever that is, it's going to keep that. And you can choose what it does to tables. So you can um, basically convert tables to unformatted tables in InDesign, or you can do tabbed text. So I'll leave those tables. Again, this document doesn't have any tables, so it's not going to make much of a difference. And then I'm going to press OK. So what happens is you now get the loaded text icon, essentially. And you now have to determine and choose where you want to place it. <clears throat> now, I don't have any existing text boxes, um, so I want to place it in this column. Now, I want you to notice something. There's a little arrow in the top corner. And it's black right now, which means it'll just do a free form placement. So it actually created a text box that's probably about the size of the margins. However, as I move it towards an actual margin on my page, you can see that it goes white. And that indicates that it notices the borders and the margins that it should use or that it wants to use. So when I have that white arrow, I'm just going to click once. And what it does, it places it perfectly within that board. You can see it's brought in all the text, place it in that text box, and the text box is the size of those margins. An alternate way to do it, I'm just going to undo, is when you have that icon, if you want to place the text, you can click and drag. And you can drag out a box the exact size that you need to place the text. So that's, that is an, a different way to do it. <clears throat> now, with importing text, maybe I had an existing text box, which I have here, and I would like to bring in a, a Word document or another text file and put it in as part of this text box. Well, to do that, what you need to do is get your text tool and simply click in that text box. Now I didn't get my text tool. You notice I was on my pointer tool on the side. If I double click a text box, you can see it just can start not converts, but switches it to the type tool or text tool. And my cursor is now uh, visible in that text box. So with that text box active, and essentially you are now editing the text, I'm just going to press enter to go to the next line. And then I'm going to go through the exact same procedure, but you see it's going to automatically place the text in the text box that I have selected. So if I go to the file menu, choose place again, this time I'm going to choose some more text. I'll select the default options. And then you see what happened is it took that remaining document and placed it in that text box. Now in this case, I have too much text to display in that one column. So I will need to talk about essentially threading that into additional columns, but we'll talk about that in the next video. For now, that's how you can import text into an InDesign document, keeping in mind that uh, the version of InDesign and the version of Word you're using will impact this a little bit. So uh, if that if you're having a problem with that, an option is in Word, you could save it as a 2000 or 2003 Word format, essentially, uh, which will be 1997 to 2003, <clears throat> and then it saves it as a DOC 
file, not a DOCX file. And sometimes that can help you when you are uh, importing it into InDesign. If you're using a straight text file, a TXT file, or even an RTF file, you're probably not going to run into those problems. So just with Word, that's something to keep in mind.